Right, let's look at DT picker on a single cell, a range of cells, and cells on the same tab in different locations, i.e. there's a gap, and obviously on multiple sheets. So let's pretend we're doing financials. This is January. Right, the first thing is you need to develop a tab. If you haven't got this, go to other videos. There's plenty to show you how to enable that. Um, we're going to go developer. Insert, we're going to go to more controls and we're looking for something called Microsoft Date Picker somewhere. There we go. Highlight it and drag a box anywhere on the screen. Once you've got the script that on the screen, you go right click um, properties and you change it or tick tick the checkbox. Tick the tick checkbox. Okay. Now you'll see this is DT Picker 1. Um, we'll come back to that later, so make a note it's DT Picker 1. Um, we're going to now right click and we're going to go view code. Now this is where you need to paste in a little bit of Visual Basic. Um, I keep this in a text file, so I'm just going to go and copy it because you use it over and over again. So once you've made it once, make a copy of it. Let's put it in there. Um, and we're now going to have to edit this. So let's first of all look at a date picker on a single cell. Now my little template there has A to A. I'm just going to make this uh, B2. Meaning I only want a date picker on cell B2. So we'll close it. We're literally done. Turn off design mode. Click anywhere on the screen and we're ready to go. Now I shall see. B2 works, no other cells do. Okay, so B2 has my date picker. All right, if we need to change this, it's quite simple. Go back into design mode, right click, uh, look at your code, and this time we'll say it's from B2 to B5. Now it's a range rather than one location. Now we'll turn off design mode, and you'll now see that we have date pickers. Um, on all the cells that we chose. Right, now we'd like it to work over here as well on the same tab. So back to design mode, right click, um, view code, and this time we're going to say from B2 to B5, comma, E2 to E5. So, whoop. So B2 to B5, comma E2 to E5. I'm sure it'll fix that up for us. Um, and turn off design mode. And hopefully now we have date pickers working over here as well on the same tab. All right, there we go. Now, multiple tabs. I'm sure there's other ways of doing this in an Excel. There's always a million ways to skin a cat. So I'll just show you my cheaty way is I'm going to make a copy of this tab. So I'm going to control, drag, and let go, and we'll call this February. And we're going to go back into design mode. Now, the first thing we want to notice is we can't half it as DT Picker 1. So I'm going to call this sheet DT Picker 2. If you use the same date picker, things really will not work that well. So there's DT Picker 2 before I even start. Now we can go right click, um, view the code, and get rid of all this nonsense because um, it will put its headings back in. So, unfortunately, because I copied from one to two, so just clean that up a bit now. It, we can see we're on sheet two, so we obviously need to tell it this is sheet two's picker, and we're using something called DT Picker 2. It's as simple as that. Clear the nonsense up top, change it to the sheet you're on, and the DT Picker you've named and hit the OK button. There you go, it's done. Um, the DT Picker now is working on this tab. Um, that's it, that's how you do uh, individual cells, multiple cells, multiple locations, and how you would do more than one tab, and you would obviously repeat that for DT Picker 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, and the sheet numbers, remembering to um, clear that all that nonsense um, in the VB code. Have a great day.